You're with The Capitalist Sage, a twice a month podcast that seeks out entrepreneurs and experts that speak to the real world life of doing business for their sage advice. Now with your hosts, Carl Barham and Rico Figliolini. Welcome to The Capitalist Sage podcast. We're here to bring you advice and tips from seasoned pros and experts to help you improve your business. Today we have a special set of guests that's talking about the business of charity and putting on civic events. My name is Carl Barn with Transworld Business Advisors and my host is and my co-host is Rico Figliolini with Mighty Rockets Digital Marketing and the publisher of Petri Corner Magazine. Hey Rico, how you doing? Hey Carl, good. This is lovely. We'd also like to um, introduce our sponsors, CMX Cinebistro, a wonderful evening to enjoy a movie and a dinner in the Petri Corner Town Center. Okay. Um, a new location that's opened up with that that folks can go out and enjoy. Th- think of a four-star restaurant that happens to show movie. Scratch kitchen, desserts, all from scratch. It's a great place. And um, if you want to look at Greater Gwinnett, Explore Gwinnett is uh, another one of our sponsors, and you should check out their top ten list. Right now we're featuring one on desserts, but you can look on things to do with your children, mm-hmm. restaurants, places to get drinks, um, all things Gwinnett. The last person we want to thank is Atlanta Tech Park um, for hosting the Capitalist Sage podcast. Um, if you're looking for a place to, to connect with other entrepreneurs and business people, Atlanta Tech Park is a great place to set your roots. Today, um, we'd like to, to, to welcome our guests, Shivani Desai and Jay Summers. They're both um, part of the leadership team for Taste Gwinnett, um, a, a fantastic event that's put on every year, started in 2018, that helps bring the community together through food. So why don't I let um, Shivani introduce herself and then Jace. Well, once again, Carla Mirko, thank you for having us. It's always a pleasure. Um, I'm Shivani Desai, the CEO at Taste the Chair. Inc., part of the founding team for the 2018 Taste of Gwinnett event, and I'm currently a sophomore at PC Ridge High School. Um, and I am Jace Summers. I am a junior at the Gwinnett School of Mass Science and Technology, and I'm acting as the chief financial officer this year. Well, let's just jump right into it. What I find really fascinating seeing um, young folks um, getting involved in entrepreneurship through through the putting on this event, a pretty large event. What makes you th- think about getting involved in this and, and spending some time to put on such a fabulous event? Yes, well, actually, uh, around August of 2018, I was connected to Sunil Reddy, who is the founder of this event, also on Petri Corner's Life podcast, and, you know, he asked if I would be interested based on my experience. I had some experience putting on cultural events through student council at Pushy Ridge High School. He thought that my skills would be transferable to helping him with the logistics of such an event, and I had no idea what I was getting into. (laughs) When I started, I didn't know what was happening, and I don't think most of us did. That's part of the great thing when you're a high school student. You know, you have nothing to lose with getting yourself out there. It's all about experimenting and trying and having fun with it. So when I was able to see in the closer months towards the event how big of a deal this was and how you were pulling people from all parts of Gwinnett, the students, the business people, the restaurants, all, you know, when the election season was running Mm -hmm. around, just the community connections, that's what really made me passionate about this is as young people, we have the power to bring everyone together to raise money for a good cause. All proceeds from the event go to Relay for Life. That's what keeps me going every day as the last event is over and we're starting again for this year. Um, So I had the opportunity to join the team this year. I have been super involved in Relay for Life. Um, My life was personally touched by cancer. Back in seventh grade, I knew um, a friend who passed away due to cancer. So um, I've always been super involved in Relay for Life and supporting the American Cancer Society um, since that. And so Sunil, since he's a senior at my school, he invited me to come join the team. And it's been awesome ever since. Well, I'm going to ask a little bit about Relay for Life. I know a lot of people hear about it. Can you tell us a little bit about Relay for Life and and, and why um, this is a really good organization to support? Okay, so Relay for Life is a, the fundraising wing of the American Cancer Society. And what they focus on doing is raising money to help um, do research for cancer because we obviously want to get rid of this disease as quick as possible. And um, it's crazy because about one in three people get cancer at least sometime in their life, which is mm. crazy how many people it affects. 
And so they provide aid to people who have cancer by giving them ride to the hospital or um, helping them pay for treatment so that we can help make these people's lives as easy as possible. And the great thing about Gwinnett especially is, you know, we have the annual Gwinnett Relay for Life event, one of the largest events in the world, raises several thousand dollars for this organization. That's actually how this whole Taste of Gwinnett event started. When the 2017 event was rained out, unfortunately, everyone had to evacuate. Sunil and the team, they were saddened by the fact that this was um, occurring, the loss of money, so they wanted to start a way to gain more money for Relay for Life. And the great thing about Gwinnett County and being with Gwinnett County Public Schools is every school is heavily involved with Relay for Life and their sectors and uh, many school events. Our PC Ridge recently had a student versus faculty basketball game. Mm-hmm. All proceeds went to Relay for Life. So it's almost a household name by now in this county for the schools as well. So as your experience going through this from last year to this year, as you're saying, help me understand how the local community, you can galvanize them using an event like this. What are some of the things you're seeing out there when you're preparing for this event that people should be aware of? Okay, so first thing, we've been shocked at how um, reactive and how um, the community in Gwinnett really loves this cause and they really want to um, support it. And we've seen sponsors who have come up and even though we're a bunch of high schoolers, they've been like, we love what you're doing and we love your cause and we really want to help you. Um, We've seen, we've had many mentors come up to us and... um, really get involved and kind of guide us through the process because we are just high schoolers we don't have a lot of experience and they do and the great thing is whenever you're putting on a venture or any sort of event we have a cause that gives us a personal connection with our wider audience our main brand is fighting cancer i think that's something that the general population would agree cancer is horrible and if they can find a way to help a cause by something else that also brings us together food I love food, you know, I'm pretty much everyone on this, mm-hmm. especially diverse food. Mm-hmm. Since we're in Gwinnett County, there's so many different types of people. I'm so thankful to live here. And they like access to you know, diverse food. Everything is here together. You're having, you know, mascots from different events coming, different sponsors, people can socialize, and they know that everything that they're doing, every dollar that they put into having this event is going to fighting cancer. So they feel as they have a personal connection with making a difference in the world. And one of the, you know, as you mentioned, the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce, you know, so uh, that they've been a great influence in helping us, providing connections as well as you know, through Relay for Life offices near here. We've had several mentors come up unexpectedly. Mr. Johnny Barrett, great man from Insight Political Group. He's helped mm-hmm. us tremendously with advice. Senator P.K. Martin helped us with her insurance. He's always there to rely on. We have the print trade company. They do our in-kind sponsorships for all of our printing needs. And it's great to see that people can have faith in you. And after we've legitimized ourselves from the first event, we hope that people will continue to find that same love for supporting this cause. I think it's great that you're developing and building an event where the business community is getting involved. And um, with, with, without, uh, without no doubt, we need more help from the business community and, and want to be folks out there that want to help um, support. Um, please do make sure to reach out. We'll share some of that information with you um, at the end of the show. But um, but the business community is pairing up with the school system and folks, young folks that are out there trying to make a difference, both gaining experience in that as well as putting on a really complex um, thing with the broader community of Gwinnett County. So using food as a way to bring people together to fight a common cause that everyone's impacted with. Um, when you started thinking about um, getting into the details of doing this, what do you find are some of the things that, that are most challenging um, as you're trying to get folks involved and trying to put on such a big event? Oh, uh, <laughs> one of the main things as you know, we're high school students, we have the disadvantage and experience and legitimizing ourselves in front of people who've had decades of experience in the business world. So we have to work extra hard, have the look, have the professional, the cards, the name tags, the meeting agendas, show them that we care and that we were willing to go to their level in how we present ourselves so that they know they're benefiting with a reputable organization and it's something that we've learned from when you first, you know, you first call a restaurant or you first go up and say, can I talk to your manager? You hear a thousand no's before your first yes as we experienced in the founding year. Just putting yourself out there is one of the hardest things when you have no background to come from. Having faith in this event is going to be put on and I will 
reach out to as many people as possible and find that one link that will get me to the next step. So let me ask you something. Do you feel like sales is a good place to be? Yeah, I think <laughs> you definitely need to sell it well because we are young and we have that disadvantage. You really need to um, over-prepare and kind of learn how to brand yourselves and sell your idea to people. I don't know. What, what, it was, what was it like the first time you went out and started reaching out to restaurants? What was that experience like having those conversations? I remember I had to make my first call to a potential restaurant and I was very nervous. I came back from a debate meeting and I was stressing out. So I didn't want to call. It's almost uh, what I've learned from the past team is you, the, you can only benefit from calling and reaching out because you'll either gain a contact you'll never lose anything you'll get your name out there and when I first called and it was a, I was hung up on a couple times and finally transferred and the first meeting that I ever went to I was taking notes and eventually you start to feel that you have earned your place with the team and you learn how to sell the event well, especially with experience. The first sales meeting that you go to is never going to be as good as after practicing your pitch over and over again with experience mm -hmm. from seasoned, seasoned veterans of the business industry. And it's great that coming from you know school, school is great and all, but when you're out in the real world practicing these sorts of things, it's the most valuable I could have. You know, Even if I may not go into business, I do want to pursue business and computer science and Jace. Yeah. So, yes. I definitely want to pursue business. Um, I found a love how this is very real world, very hands on. Um, school is very in the classroom, and it's really important. Our mentor Johnny Barrett is always stressing the importance of um, going to school and getting an education. But there's a lot of stuff that you don't learn in school that you kind of um, need to try hands on. And I think this has really given us lots of experience in that. Well, I'll tell you from one thing, what you're doing is exactly what we start folks off that go into sales. I spent years working with people in sales, and you're doing the thing that, if you think about in the future, most companies are looking for and, and, and looking for experienced salespeople. You're going to walk out of high school <laughs> with the sales experience, being able to call in on restaurants and so on. Um, at first, it might be scary, but that practice that you're putting in is just going to be serve you so well as you go forward, so it's glad to hear that. I'm curious, though, um, you're using a, a, a traditional method of reaching out to people through calls and phone. Tell me how you're able to use social media to, to, to bring people in and both communicate and hopefully get more sponsors and people supporting the event. The, well, the great thing with social media, I personally made my first Facebook for Taste of Gwinnett, never had experience with it before. Um, the great thing is, you know, geotagging, you're able to cater your business towards insights, especially with Instagram when they've rolled out their new Instagram insights for business and corporations. You can have your page show up and have any posts you want to promote with students or not really students, but anyone in the area. That's how we've been able to get our name out there, as well as by word of mouth or even through LinkedIn posts when we meet with any corporate sponsor, business or mentor the most the posts that get the most views are people who have the most experience in the county that we see and you can see how many page visits you get how when you're struggling when you're not and especially through the schools a good portion of our attendees last year were high school students because when you have one friend post about an event that they're going to their friend will also post about it and they'll post about it and the chain continues and that's where people go especially if you have high school volunteers their families will come they will come if you're a for-profit if you have volunteers they will buy something from you and the word of mouth spreads through that route and I know we've already had contacts from magazines and newspapers and restaurants who are excited to get involved just because of our name Gwinnett we have such a great community so uh, people are always looking through hashtags and explore Gwinnett is a great way people have found out about us through there just having every outlet that we can possibly give. I remember one day we spent all day handing out flyers at the Duluth Fall Festival mm -hmm. and picking up trash as well, or going to the restaurants that we've contacted, putting our name out there, any way form, any way and form. But social media is really picking up, for what I can tell. Well, I can tell you, I'm already excited uh, about it. Um, let's mention just real quickly, um, when is uh, Taste of Gwinnett? So folks will know when to start preparing for that. So Taste of Gwinnett this year is going to be November 16th. Um, we're really excited for this date. Uh, many people originally, um, we weren't so keen about that because it's the same day as the Georgia-Auburn football game. <laughs> and <laughs> growing up in the South, I've loved football. And so we're definitely trying to steer into that a lot. And um, 
we're going to be having TVs with the game plastered on it to try and um, allow everyone to come so they can watch the game while eating delicious food. It'll be Saturday from 5.30 to 9.30 at the Infinite Energy Center in Duluth. Oh, fabulous. Well, you know, you, a lot of what you're talking about, which is amazing, is the exact same advice we'd give. You're, you're, you've got a sales strategy, making calls and reaching out to people. You know more about social media than a lot of business owners that you might come across. Um, and it's interesting that do you find for, for your generation in class and the use of technology, is this making that part of this much easier for you to be able to promote on these different, these different medias? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, we've grown up in the technology era. We grew up with smartphones in our hands, so we've always been used to it. We've networked without even knowing it um, just since growing up. So it's been um, really useful getting to find an outlet to um, continue to, a reason to um, continue to spread our name. And we've definitely been using Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn to reach out to people. I think people underestimate the power of teams on phones for anything. Whenever uh, I know personally, uh, when people post, especially I say through Snapchat stories and Instagram stories about events that are going on, that's on my radar because my friends are going to that event. I, I'm interested in it. And when you have a good portion of the people in your school advertising an event, people, the flyers at our school almost blend together. They're hanging in the hallways. It's hard to make stuff stand out. But when you have your close group of you know, community on social media posting about something, people don't un people underestimate the impact that it has on whoever is viewing it. Mm -hmm. Especially in high school when you have events, and when you are able to draw in the high schools, people uh, almost the potluck of resources. The I call them, you know, free laborers. <laughs> we have high school students, you know, good, good, honest people who want they are ready to provide free labor. Honestly, uh, you have the volunteer clubs, Beta Club, National Honor Society, and they are always the whole purpose of these organizations is to provide volunteer hours and service. We had 30 to 40 volunteers from Duluth High School <laughs> help us at our event, holding signs outside on the road, hanging up banners, setting up napkins and tables, and they did it with such honor because they wanted to help and they had a purpose for helping, so that saved us definitely lots of time and money, and they bought into our event, they donated to get food afterwards, mm -hmm. their friends came to support them, so having that network, especially when people are physically helping you with the event, ties into social media as well. So at this stage here, you've got some months out. What are some of the biggest things that you're working on now to prepare for the event? What's, what's some of your biggest areas of focus? So right now our primary focus is preparing for the May 10th Relay for Life event. Mm -hmm. So that event is, again, the largest in the world. It's The reason Taste of Gwinnett exists is because the event was rained out a few years ago. So we're really trying to show up to that and have a great present presence. Um, we've gotten T-shirts. We've gotten water bottles, pens. We really are going to hand them out, try and and um, tell people about Taste of Gwinnett and what we've done last year, um, how we were able to stand up and raise thousands of dollars for Relay for Life mm -hmm. as a first-year event, and how this year we're looking to um, double, if not triple, the number of people we can get to come there. Mm -hmm. So um, we're really excited to show up with that. What date is uh, Relay for Life in May? Friday, May 10th. May 10th. It's another, we're trying to get as many sponsorships as possible now. Recently, uh, Taste of Gwinnett is run under Taste the Charity, Inc., mm -hmm. uh, the same charity founded by our founding team, Sunil, Danny, Gideon, James, Chelsea, Ryan. We received our 501c3 status. All of our donations are tax deductible, and hopefully before the tax return comes, you know, we want to get as many sponsorships as possible for the event so we can mutually benefit from advertising and getting the money secure before we move into the event and last-minute preparations for the logistics and the restaurants. So the May 10th event is at the Gwinnett Fairgrounds, and it's from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. on Saturday. So it's actually um, a full 12 hours, yes. and it's a really fun event. Um, even if you're not going to come for Taste of Gwinnett, come for lots of other reasons because it really supports the cause of Relay for Life and fighting cancer. Um, it's like a big family that just gets together. Yes. I mean, yeah. from what I understand, I've been there once, and it's just unbelievable. There's tons of food, tons of activities. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. awesome. So if, if, if you were to give advice to someone else kind of going down this path and, and joining in and getting involved, what would be some of the things you'd advise other young people do to, to, to take on a task like this? Uh, so my first piece of advice would be you really have to step outside of your comfort zone. Um, it doesn't seem natural to just pick up a phone and start calling owners of businesses and um, trying to sell your idea, but that's kind of how you um, get 
that's how you get started. You have to pick up a phone and start calling people or going and meeting people. It's um, it takes a lot of courage and consistency. Like um, you have to be very driven to do it, but um, if you do, it can turn out amazingly. And finding that team to support you. We have a group of six high school students doing this right now. Uh, me, Jay Summers, Isabel McHenry, David Lee, Katie Kim, Kyle Zuluaga, all of us. We have each other to depend on, and we have the tasks divided up. And I know since we have a second year event, we have a proper end goal in mind, but I know last year when I was on the founding team, we had to know exactly where we were going and the timeline. And as you want to build up a net, like community base, you know, most high school students don't have the resources or the connections mm -hmm. that we had, but we only gained them through stepping out of our comfort zone and calling people. You know, we never would have had um, Senator Rob Woodall attend our event if we hadn't picked up that phone mm -hmm. because there's no way we would have done that if we were just high school students saying, come to my event. You know what's funny to me? I, I, Mike, I have three kids. So two of them are graduating. Well, one of them is graduating tomorrow. The other one graduated in December. But um, I'll look at my cell phone bill, and I'll see all text messages. <laughs> I can see thousands of text messages going out. But I see maybe five minutes of talk time. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, um, you know, and I understand that. I mean, there's a different way of communicating. Because even uh, my younger kid is on uh, plays Call of Duty. He's on uh, a lot of different. Um, he's using Discord. He's using uh, Twitch. Twitch, I think. Yeah. Twitch. Um, so he's he's online. He's socializing. It's a different way of socializing. Totally mm -hmm. different. You know, when I say, "Why don't you go meet your friends?" and like, what, "What are you talking about?" They're on. <laughs> I'm on Discord. I'm already chatting with them. So yeah, very different from from what they uh, from what we used to do, obviously. So that social media bench, I can see that. And it is, I think, for a lot of kids to get out from that text thing to actually pick up a phone yeah. to do that. It's, a, it's, a, it's learning a skill set that might have been lost for a while. <laughs> yes. um, but you know one of the things that made me think, and you mentioned it when you said the team that you have of six folks. Um, just imagine if you look at all of the, the, the students in the high schools whose parents own restaurants, if they were to go approach their parents to support how many restaurants could have done? I mean, you can reach out just to the community. They own businesses. They, they're, they're, we're all in the same community. We go to the same schools. And uh, galvanizing that group of folks within the schools to go reach out to their parents to be to be part of this event might be a powerful way, and that expands your team and how many people can get out. And along the way, you know, you can't get a better person than 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 you know someone asking mom and dad to support this for a good cause. It's it it, it might be an easy easy sell for those. But I want to thank you both for for coming out today and 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 spending time, um, you know, talking about this really important event, Taste of Gwinnett and Relay for Life, and the cause that you're that you're promoting for this. Well, um, Jace, I, I know as you as you go forward in this this year, your first year, I'd love to chat with you some more as you go through this um, and and get more learnings along the way. And um, Shivani, I think. You, this is your second year, so you're going to get a, a, um, um, a different experience of it, but also being you know, in the leadership role, it's just a great experience for both of you. So definitely want to thank you for coming and being guest on, on the podcast today. Thank you for yes. having us. Thank you so much. Um, this has been an honor. Cool. Where, where can they, um, what's the website? Yes, our website is tasteofgwinnett.org. You can reach out to us on our social medias, Instagram, at Taste of Gwinnett, Facebook page, Taste of Gwinnett. There's a LinkedIn page, Taste of Gwinnett. You can reach us both on LinkedIn as well. <laughs> and our Twitter is Taste Gwinnett. So if you're listening to this podcast, you own a restaurant, catering place, these are the two you need to contact. And uh, it's Absolutely. We're, we're calling out all restaurants in Gwinnett <laughs> County to come out and support. We're calling out volunteers to get out there and make calls. We're calling out those students in the schools to reach out to their parents. And let's, let's break that record from last year. Let's make sure that we show how Gwinnett can come together and support a really great community event for a good cause. Mm -hmm. So have the largest tasty event Gwinnett County for the second year in a row. Ab Absolutely. Let's do it. Sounds good. Well, we'd also like to thank um, our sponsors, Atlanta Tech Park, a great place to come and 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 be around other entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, to, if, you, if you're looking for a place to, to call home for your business. Um, we also want to thank CMX Cinebistro. Um, 
wonderful um, date night or event night for folks that want to go out and enjoy a movie and a great dinner. Um, and we also want to thank Explore Gwinnett. As, as you can see, the theme throughout today's podcast is how Gwinnett can come together to do great things. And there's a lot of wonderful places in Gwinnett. So we've got some top ten lists that are available to you online at PetrieCornersLife.com. Or, or better yet, LivingInPetrieCorners.com. LivingInPetrieCorners.com. Although and, both sides are fine. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, definitely check out um, um, all of those sponsors and just want to say thank you um, again for coming out. I'm Carl Barham with Transworld Business Advisors of Atlanta Peachtree. Yeah, we help business owners, and I know as I'm going out there and talking with business owners, I'm definitely going to help promote and get you some more sp- sponsors. But if you if you need a consult on, on growing your business through acquisitions or divesting your business to do what's next, um, Transworld of Atlanta Peachtree can help you. Um, can be reached at kbarm at tworld.com. And Rico. Sure. Rico Figliolini. I'm host of, co-host with Paul McCarl here, who really does the heavy list, lifting in the Capitalist Safe, this podcast. Uh, but it's a family podcast, so we do Peachtree Corner's Life, uh, The Ed Hour, with my co-host Alan Kaplan, and we do um, Prime Lunchtime with the City Manager once a month also. So we get to see, talk about city issues after the fourth Tuesday of the month. That's kind of neat. I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. I do social media marketing. Creative. I'm a creative director as well, so graphic services. And lately, I've been publishing Peachtree Corners magazine. So I'll put this out there uh, four times a year originally, and now we've expanded to six times a year because it's just been so received, wow. thankfully. And I think that it's hopefully a good product and people are enjoying it. So cool. Yep. That's what I do. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, Thank you for joining us on the Capitalist Sage podcast. Have a good day. This has been the Capitalist Sage with Carl Barham and Rico Figliolini, the twice a month podcast with entrepreneurs and business experts. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Want more? Visit our website at capitalistsagepodcast.com.